By uniting our intentions, we create a wave of love that traverses all dimensions, touching each being with its divine essence. Now, the essence of all this is, first thing is to understand the nature of how existence is happening. Either you can look at this or you can look at the atom or you can look at the universe. If you want to look at the universe, it is complex, it is difficult because you don't have a gallery seat, you know. There is no… Uh, it is not like a stadium, you can sit somewhere and watch the whole universe. Very difficult, you can only see it in pieces. If you want, an a want, want to watch an atom, Nobody has seen an atom, do you know this? Do you know this? Even in a super electron microscope, you can't see an atom. We have observed its activity, but we have never seen an atom as such. But we have broken it. We are capable of breaking things that even we cannot see. That's our… We are very proud of this these days. <laughs> We can break anything. We can make it or not is a questionable thing, but we can break anything we want. Even if we cannot see it, we can break it. Now what you see and what you do not see itself is a very dicey thing in the sense, <laughs> what is it that you can see? Right now, can you see my hand? Yes. You can see my hand only because my hand stops light. If my hand did not stop this light, if it allowed light to pass through, you wouldn't see this hand, yes? Or in other words, right now your visual apparatus can see only those things which stop light. Anything that allows light through, you cannot see it. You cannot see life, light itself, first of all. Can you see the light that is here? No, only whatever stops light, you can see it. What does not stop light, you cannot see it. Tch, very bad, isn't it? You must be able to see all those things which allow light to pass through because they are important things. But right now your visual apparatus are trained to see or capable of seeing only that which stops light. So the whole process of seeing life the way it is means, first of all evolving an eye, a thoughtless eye, an eye which is free of thought. When I say free of thought, it is free from the taint of memory. Right now these two eyes are heavily loaded with memory. So you can see this, if you see a group of people like this, if you just casually look like this, if the… among these hundreds of people, if there is one face that you are familiar with, you will see suddenly that face sticks out. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? You are going in a street, there are hundred people standing there. Your friend is among that. If you look here, just this friend's face is more clear than the rest of the faces because this eye works with memory. The more memory you have, the better it sees. No memory, it cannot see. Memory means an accumulated past. Memory means information. Memory means that which does not exist but acts out as if it does. Memories are more real than reality, isn't it so? Yes, sir? See, I want you to understand, everything in your life is run by memory. Not just your computer stick. Everything in your life. When I say memory, not just what you carry here, your very body is a body of memory. Why if you eat a banana, 
it becomes a masculine body and if she eats a banana, it becomes a feminine body is simply because of the memory that it contains, isn't it? The information that is stored in this body and that body is different. Same banana, it becomes a man, same banana, it becomes a woman. Yes or no? Huh? Are you eating different types of bananas? Same thing, same food if you eat, it is becoming one way. In one person it is becoming dark skin, in another person it's becoming fair skin. How? The memory that you carry. Do you remember your great, 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 great grandfather? You don't, but his nose is sitting on your face. Your body remembers, isn't it? You may not have no idea who it was, but your body remembers even today. A million years ago, how your forefathers were, still it remembers, isn't it? So what you call as my body is just a body of memory and eyes are loaded with memory. An eye which is loaded with memory, an eye which is corrupted with memory cannot see anything the way it is. It will only see things as it is convenient because the software is working from inside. It will not allow you to see anything the way it is. This is what traditionally we are referring to as karma. It is there in your body, it is there in your energies, it is there in the way your chemical reactions happen, it is there in your brain, it is there in your mind, it is there in everything, in the very physical energy that you carry, there is memory because you will see each person's energies behave differently from the other simply because of the type of memory it carries. If you want to get rid of this, it's a long process and if you get rid of this, dismantling of the personality and the body will happen. So another way is to create a distance from it. Just hold it little away. When you want to play with it, you play with it. When you want to switch it off, you must be able to switch it off. So for this, an external view is needed. Right now, your ears are loaded with memory, your eyes are loaded with memory, your tongue is loaded with memory. Why? <laughs> if you are born in Karnataka, if you go to North India, food doesn't taste good is because the tongue is loaded with memory. Yes or no? Have you suffered this or no? You went north and uh, they said, alu bhaji, alu… <laughs> alu matter, alu, alu palak, alu parota, alu, 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 they said. You couldn't stay there. because your tongue is loaded with memory, it wants the same things back, otherwise it will suffer. So what being loaded with memory means is a cocoon of the past is holding you. It will not allow you to even move into the present. A cocoon of the past holds you and you allow it to do this because it feels safe, it creates a cocoon. There is safety. But in safety, there is also imprisonment. You are really safe if we lock you up in a safe, isn't it? But the problem is you can't get out. That's the whole problem. <laughs> walls that you build as self-protection, they also become the walls of self-imprisonment. That is the nature of life. If you lock yourself from inside or outside, it's the same thing. As long as you do not open the door, whether somebody locked you from outside or you locked yourself from inside, there is no difference, anyway you are imprisoned, isn't it? At least somebody locked you from outside, you can at least complain and scream. You locked yourself from inside, you can only be depressed. You cannot even scream, who at whom will you scream? So this process of what we are looking at is, the memory imprints itself on all levels, right up to the elemental level. 
from the five elements which function here, from just after that, memory's work starts. So when we utter the word karma, it is not one simple formula or it's not, you know, people are saying theory of karma, we are not talking about any theory. We are referring to a certain reality, karma means memory. Action and memory, past action exists only in the form of memory, isn't it so? Yes? Memory not just what you carry here, every cell in the body carries its own memory. Why one atom behaves differently from another atom? Though the same ingredients is, it has a memory. A hydrogen atom has one kind of memory, oxygen atom has another kind of memory. Unless you mix them up, they will continue to behave like that. It is in a small circle, you are in a little larger circle, the universe is in a much larger circle, but the same memory rules all of it. So when we said karma, we are not talking about some concept or philosophy, we are referring to a certain reality which is finding manifestation as who you are. The very shape of your body is because of memory. If a bird eats a mango, it becomes a bird. If a worm eats a mango, it becomes a worm. If you eat a mango, you become a human being. Same mango, how many things it's doing, depending upon what kind of memory it carries. Isn't it? You… what you call as a seed, if you plant the same seed, if you plant a seed in the same soil, here you plant a mango tree, here you plant, plant an apple tree in the same soil, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes. I know there is a newspaper picture where, uh, you know, a jackfruit has become bananas, that's different. Yes, you saw this? Are you all from Bangalore or Devanali? <laughs> no, you didn't see this. A bunch of bananas are coming out of a jackfruit for some reason. <laughs> and that's a freak. And that's happened because of some mix-up. We don't know who did the mix-up. <laughs> but essentially, if you… in the same soil, if you plant an apple seed and a mango seed, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes because seed is a certain amount of memory, isn't it? Whether it is a seed of a plant or your father's seed which enter your mother's womb, it is just memory and memory and memory, isn't it so? This is karma and this goes right back, right up to the elemental level, everything is memory. Only the pure element is free from memory. So the idea, when we start, we're starting of Bhutesha, because that's the most important thing, that he mastered the element, that's why we bow down to him, because… because he mastered the elements, he has an eye which has no memory, a taintless eye which sees everything just the way it is. So yoga essentially means developing an eye which is not contaminated by memory, which simply sees. It does not see things the way your memory perverts it. It simply sees everything the way it is. This eye will see those things which do not stop light. Right now these two eyes can only see what stops light. If you start seeing something that does not stop light, that means another dimension of the eye is beginning to function. So does the earth, in fact, so does the sky. All the celestial objects are making their own sounds. There are sounds of pain, sounds of pleasure, sounds of misery, sounds of joy. For everything there is a sound. With human life, it's very true. Sounds of life and there are sounds of death. And there are even sounds of silence. 
So this complex amalgamation of sounds, different kinds of sounds, creates different intent, different levels of compulsiveness, different levels of bondage, and different possibilities of entanglement. In all this, why one chooses to become silent? Silence is not a way of denying yourself life. It is not even about denying yourself articulation. Silence is about moving from compulsiveness to consciousness. All sounds represent different forms and different dimensions of compulsiveness. When one chooses to become conscious, not be entangled in the compulsive nature of the existence, he naturally chooses to become silent. Silence does not mean shutting your mouth silence, plugging your ears silence. You can sing in silence. You can dance in silence. You can even speak in silence. You can even scream in silence. You don't try. That does not mean when everybody is silent you scream, that is not screaming in silence. Because sound is of the surface, silence is of the core. It is only the surface which makes the sound. See, now the water is hitting the surface and making the sound. Deep down, there is no sound. That is so with life. On the surface, it is a very complex mesh of sounds. A maze of sounds happening. But at the core, there is no sound. There is no word for no sound in English language. We call it nishabd. That means absence of sound, a total absence of sound. Absence of sound means absence of reverberation. Absence of reverberation means absence of life. Absence of life means absence of creation. Absence of creation means absence of the Creator too. So a space which is beyond creation and Creator, a dimension which is beyond life and death, that is what is being referred to as silence or nishabd. One cannot do this. One can become this. Commonly, there are two words employed to describe this. One is man. That means you're practicing silence. You're not silent. You shut your mouth and you're remaining in man. This is not nishapt. Man means you're practicing silence. If you're practicing something, obviously you're not that. Are you life or are you practicing life? I'm asking you. Are you life or are you practicing life? 
Practicing life? No, your life. Maybe not very, very well practiced, but your life. <laughs> Similarly, there is a difference between practicing silent silence and becoming silence. Practicing silence starts as a certain restriction, but slowly, as one practices silence, one can possibly become silent. One can become silent in intense activity, but nobody can keep up intense activity forever. Moments of intense activity are only moments. Nobody can sustain it. You will expand yourself. Only if you can achieve it in inactivity, it is sustainable. If something is possible only in intense activity, it is never sustainable. In a, a very intense and ecstatic moment of singing, somebody may become or taste a moment of silence. But how long can you keep it up? Your throat will tear and your neighbors may kill you. Possible. So this possibility of coming to silence or becoming silent also means to become still, to become utterly still. Stillness can be achieved in so many ways. If you watch a snake, he is still. If you watch a tiger which is on a hunt, absolutely still, charged but still. These are all different dimensions of stillness practiced for survival. If a snake moves too often, he'll get killed. If a tiger does not know how to be still, he'll never get his food. These are all acts of survival. A human being, for survival he has to be active. Only when his vision falls upon something which is beyond survival, then he will think of stillness, then he will understand as he observes himself, as he notices the complexity of one's compulsions. He understands the only way to solve it is to become still. To train this body, to train this mind, to become still. Oh, take some effort. If one is simply blissed out, he will become still. But otherwise one has to work. Bit by bit one has to work to bring this body to absolute stillness. Most people cannot hold their body in one place for any length of time. There, all the time and moment. As it is said, a man is ill only because he does not know how to be still. Because in stillness, you are in touch with a dimension way beyond creation. Once one is in touch with that, there is no such thing as illness. If I sit here and the body rots and falls down, still there is no illness, it's just there. Because, in fact, when one becomes utterly still, he may not be able to hold on to the body unless he learns the tricks.
the mechanism of the body. So why should I become still? Will I lose my body? Anyway, you will lose your body. And the time to lose your body comes if you want to lose it gracefully. Then you must know at least a little bit of stillness. If you want to put your body down like you can put this piece of cloth down, with the same ease, with the same gracefulness, then you need to have some stillness in you. Otherwise, you and your body, you have to be torn apart, which is an ugly thing to do. When you're being torn away from your body, it is an ugly and painful thing to do, unless you can keep it down. There's no grace in life. So if one has to attain to that grace, at least a certain amount of stillness has to enter your life. For this to happen, a certain level of silence has to enter your life. If right now it is not coming, at least practicing a little bit of mouth, in an hour, if you're speaking 1573 words right now, how many more? How many words do you spit out in a minute? 1573, you're actually doing that many? I thought that's impossible. <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> so whatever number you're doing, See if you can articulate the same things that you are saying with half the number of words. Suddenly you will become extremely conscious of everything. Right now, a oral diarrhea is happening. If you are doing 1573, it's diarrhea, okay. <laughs> now, if you have to hold back half the words and still say the same things, now you have to be very conscious, otherwise you cannot say it. Just try this and see. Tomorrow, one day. Hmm? In an hour, normally what number of words you utter, make it half. Don't curtail your activity, still say the same things. But with half the words, how wonderful the whole world will feel, you know. <laughs> world will be a wonderful place, I'm telling you tomorrow, if everybody does this. Hmm? Many marriages will be saved. We hope this video has been a source of inspiration for you. Be sure to check out our other content and share your wisdom with the world.